we, we live in a very strange culture for healthcare because, well, we do and we don't, because we're, things are changing now, which is good. But the, the kind of preconceived idea of this is that life should be comfortable and everything should be easy. And it's not fair if it's not. That's kind of the viewpoint people tend to take. Whereas when I'm working as a practitioner, I look at that and go, actually, that's not strictly true. Um, we grow through adversity. And if you, if you take yoga or sports as an example, that if you take yourself to the limit of, say, a yoga pose or yeah. a strike to hit a goal or something like that, what that means is that the rest of life feels a bit easier in comparison because you've gone that extra mile. So he's absolutely right. So suddenly everything feels a bit easier because you've been through a really hard time um, and it makes you strong. And from a health point of view, it's very important to be strong because actually by living in a com- an a- eternal comfort zone and, and in a sort of suppressive approach to our bodies, into, you know, eat sugar, have an alcoholic drink, you know, take an antidepressant, have a painkiller. It's just suppressing, suppressing. It's driving things inwards and it's making us weaker. So, you know, you think, well, it's only going to be three generations time before, you know, the human race is pretty weak because we haven't had to struggle for anything. And that it's it's. It's quite interesting. I know we look at global warming and think, oh, we're just going to flood ourselves to death. You think, well, yeah, but we'll just basically, we'll just destroy ourselves anyway by by a comfort zone. So it's very important to go beyond yeah. what's comfortable. That's as good as an explanation as any of I've, of, that I've heard for things like cryotherapy or, you know, plunging into a cold pool or something like that. Mm. But it is true, isn't it? It's nice to be comfortable right now, quite warm. Mm. We've, we've closed the window so we can't hear too much tree cutting. It's just mm. quite nice, isn't it? But pampering is the destruction of the human body. We're mm. designed to... That's why we love sport. We're designed to excel, right? That's what's so exciting about watching it, when something's so difficult to achieve, and yet you achieve it. Because what you're showing is the excellence of the potential of the human body. So if we're not doing that to translate, you know, that winning goal to, you know, a normal person just doing their life, we have to apply that to our everyday lives. Which is probably why we like watching sport. It reminds us of what's possible, and therefore introduce that into your life. Introduce, from a comfortable point of view, these simple techniques because they feel good and they're nice. But then apply, look at your life and go, okay, my life is difficult right now. I'd say that applies to everybody. Everybody is just time poor and exhausted. And it's like, okay, so what do we need to do about that? We've got to apply these techniques right into the heart of where we are at our most busy, which is why these techniques were being designed for like minute moments. You can do meditations in a minute. The Smiling Breath Ritual, which is, again, on my website, one of the key um, rituals, which is completely free, you're using air, um, is a minute meditation that you can do. You can do it in a minute. You can descend into meditative space for one minute and just do it one breath at a time and come out with the breath. So you could meditate 100 times a day now. Mm. It's about changing. This is what children do to you. They they stretch you and they, they force you to change. You can't. It's no longer just about you. It's about them and your relationship to them, which grows you in turn. So the very suffering of the sleepless nights and the fact that you can't do your normal routine improves your body. So it's like, okay, well, how do I adjust to this? Ah, oh, well, actually, I'll have to change my meditation techniques. The Taoist masters, and again, I talk about in the book, there's walking meditations, there's single breath meditations. Then you can take that single breath and go and sit in the bath and you say, for example, the bath salts to deepen it and take that into a 20-minute meditation. But what you're doing is you're using the breath and the mind and you're reactivating it. You're constantly going back to that place the rest of the day. So you give your body that stillness at one moment, even if it's only five minutes. And then many times during the rest of the day, you engage back, you go back to it. So, And the thing with the rescue breath is you could be sat like right now at this table or in a boardroom or at your desk working or in a car and you can be doing the rescue breath and be completely engaged with what's going on around you and no one knows what you're doing. And yet actually what you're doing is healing the body with oxygen. 